Hi, today we're going to work out the curvature of a helix. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's have a look at what curvature is. Curvature, for some reason given the letter K, is defined as 1 over the radius of a circle that would be uh, followed if you carried on on a curve and it continued on to make a whole circle. Right, for example, if you had a circle of radius 1, 1 divided by 1, the curvature would be 1. If you, had a, going, if you were going around the circumference of a bigger circle, i.e. it's got a, a radius of 2, then you'd have 1 over 2, the curvature would be a half. And that makes sense because we, the bigger the circle is, the less of a curve you'd be going around. So the number would be smaller. Right, so the bigger this number k, the more curvy the bend is, like the bend in a road on a motorbike. The bigger the k, the bigger the bend. Now, imagine I have some function which varies like this, right? And we want to figure out how curvy it is at any point on that uh, function. Well, what I could do is take tangent vectors, right? If I differentiate this function, uh, I'd get gradients at each point, right? And the, if these, I could consider these as tangent vectors. Now, obviously, the more these tangent vectors change, the more curve I'm going to get. Uh, and if I drew these tangent vectors, like, with all their tails at the same point, I can see how much they would change. The, the bigger the difference... If I did this vector subtracted from that vector, the bigger the change there would mean it was more of a curved uh, curve. Additionally, for the purposes of computing the curve, we're not bothered how the magnitude of these vectors, we just want to make them all unit vectors, because we're, we're only really concerned of their direction. Yeah, the change in their directions is an indication of how curvy this function will be. Alright, so moving down here then, instead of defining curvature like what, as one of the radius, I could also define it as how much these tangent vectors change uh, with respect to how far along the curve we move. Alright, that, that's what that means. Uh, and I can rewrite that using a bit of like chain rule manipulation as dt, yeah, the, the tangent vector differentiated with respect to t and uh, the curve function differentiated with respect to t okay so that is the formula I'm really looking for these lines here I mean I want the magnitude of these vectors all right so that's an idea of how we're going to approach this problem now looking at this function here it's a parametric vector valued function Okay, so it's a. Uh, I'm going to call this the curve function. You can see there's a vector there, three components, uh, x, y, and z. So this each each point, each time I slam a t into here, I'll get I'll get a point in three D space. All right, let's have a look on a graph what this would look like. Okay, so there you can see. My 3D representation of a helix, there's my X, Y, and Z axis. It's got a radius of 1, and it just keeps on going up and up and up, right? Now, if we were driving along that, the curve at every point would be the same, yeah, the curvature. So we're going to get a value for curvature. Let's crack on, see if we can find a solution for the curvature of this helix, then. So the first thing I need to do, then, is figure out what my tangent vector function is. So if I come up here, my tangent vector function, well that's going to be the, uh, I, if I differentiate the curve function with respect to t. All right, so I've got to differentiate each part of this vector, the x, y, and z positions in that vector. So if I differentiate cos t minus sine t, sine t differentiates to cos t, t over 10 differentiates to 1 over 10. Alright, so that is now my tangent vector function. 
okay it's still a parametric vector valued function the same as the last time but now this one represents the tangent at any point on the curve okay and coming back to that formula I've just worked out that part there that's my tangent vector function so what I need to do now is find the magnitude of that so the magnitude of this is my little Pythagoras job uh, the modulus of a 3d vector a square each component and take the square root uh, so sine minus sine t squared will be sine squared t cos squared t and uh, that'll be 1 over 100 if I square that add them all together take the square root but th these two one of your trig functions just turns into 1 so the magnitude of this vector is the square root of 101 over 100 which is square root of 101 over 10 so just to recap a little bit that was my tangent vector function is this I worked out the magnitude of that which was this now I need to get my unit tangent vector function which is just this divided by the magnitude what I just calculated before and if I put all them numbers in I end up with this so this is the the unit tangent vector function right it's going back to that it, it would be the tangent vector at each point but with each length of uh, each vector having the length of one all right so that's where we're at now now going back to my formula up here the bottom bit i've done i've worked out the magnitude of this uh, tangent vector function the top bit I need to do I've got to differentiate the tangent vector function with respect to t alright I've just computed what it is down here now I need to differentiate it alright for the top part for the numerator of my curvature formula and that brings me to here it's a pretty simple I just differentiate each term in the vector and I end up with that right and that is now the top part of this formula that I need actually no it isn't this is now the top part of that formula uh, for the curvature but I need to just make it a unit vector okay so I've got to do the whole Pythagoras thing again down here so I take each part square them uh, and I end up with root 100 over 101 right so that that bottom bit there the magnitude of ds over dt comes from here it was that value uh, and the top bit dt by dt the tangent vector function the magnitude of it uh, comes from here which I just worked out there so I've got these numbers 100 divided by 101 all rooted 101 divided by 100 all rooted it's a bit confusing but if you work all that out you'll end up at the square root of 100 squared over 101 squared obviously all them squares will cancel and we end up with a value of 100 over 101 that's the value of curvature for the helix right now you'll notice it's a bit less than 1 right now let's have a look at my helix uh, 3d graphical representation again what I did there if this was just a circle it would have a radius 1 and that would give me uh, a curvature of 1 over 1 which is 1 pulling that helix up if you like is going to make you have to go a little bit straighter than you did before and that's why my value of curvature was a little bit less than 1 yeah 100 over 101 so that's it then that's how you go about find uh, working out the curvature for a parametrically vector valued function quite an interesting uh, process that I enjoyed it I hope you managed to follow what I did there <laughs> I don't know if I've explained it very well again it's quite a difficult uh, concept to get your head around there's a lot of differentiation there's a lot of finding the unit vector stuff going on it's all uh, it's all good